Hey, hey, viewers, this is Entrepreneurial Success Stories coming to you again with a special, special guest. And I'm inviting guests on this show to share their stories and to inspire you and motivate you to go after your entrepreneurial dreams. And today, my guest is Mario Bekesh, who is a CEO of In Inside Intelligence. And I saw his story on LinkedIn and I totally fall in love with it. So freaking inspiring. And I wanted to invite him and he said yes, and he's here. I'm super excited. So welcome Mario Bekesh, all the way from Australia, right? That's correct. Yeah, thank you, Amy, for having me in your in your show. It, it is true privilege. I, I always say that from the very first day I saw your your appearances on LinkedIn on Professional Business Network, I always like it. How do you doing things, how you present things, and how much you believe in yourself helping other people. And of course, even it's a four o'clock morning in Sydney, um, I just want to clarify to your to your viewers and listeners, I I just wake up half an hour ago, so I'm going to be a little bit slow, but thank you for having me, Amy. It is true privilege. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Well, thank you for waking up. And yes, it's 4 a.m. for Mario right now. So he's definitely going out of his way. He's committed. He's one of the, the really, really awesome trade entrepreneurs that they're really committed and they make it work no matter what it takes. So thank you so much for waking up uh, so early thank for you. the show. And so uh, let's start uh, with your story, with a little bit about yourself. How did you become an entrepreneur? And if you can tell us a little bit, you know, how how your life has shaped and and <laughs> how did you get where you are today <laughs> amy thank you for that question i truly believe that there's expression i was always being told be careful what you wish for and i uh, you know as, as a child you know every every kid has a dreams every kid has hopes and, and beliefs there's going to be something i always wanted to be the soldier but did I know I was going to become the, the professional uh, uh, soldier and, uh, and officer? No. Uh, I was born back in Yugoslavia, which was a communist country then, and it was a different type of life. But my parents were different parents. They more preferred to be for themselves rather than for, for, the, for the kids. Uh, and um, when I was 14 years old, my father <clears throat> decided to kick me out of Christmas Eve, 86. I don't know, he was drunk and he wasn't happy with his life. Who knows what it was? And wow. for the, some reason, he told me that he needed to get out of the house. And I was thinking he was joking. I was just 14 years old. Well, he didn't joke. It was a Christmas day. It was a snowing. And, you know, he literally pulled me from my neck and threw me out of the house. Oh, and gosh. Was, like, yeah, like, look, as a kid, you know what's happening. You know, like, you know, you think it's a, just a part of, of the show, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's gonna come back and pick you up. And yeah. for some reason, my grandfather, he appears out of the dark, you know, my grandfather was a highly positioned uh, official in the secret police in communist Yugoslavia. And, uh, you know, he says, what are you doing on the snow? It's time to be at home with the family. I explained to him what it is. He took me away. So to make a long story short, um, he sent me military school. And, uh, you know, I started my career 14, 15 years old to go into uh, naval military school in, in Yugoslavia. So to become the uh, officer in the Yugoslav Federal Army. However, five years later, uh, Yugoslavia falls apart and the civil war broke out. Uh, I was being, uh, as everything was just in a mess, you know, it was just a turmoil, you didn't know what's happening. You know, suddenly you lean for the one system and then you need to grow up fighting for democracy, for independence. You know, it was all breaking simultaneously, the friendship, the families. Um, I, I have been in touch with my family, with my, with my parents. And uh, one day, uh, day before the war started, uh, I went to see them, I stayed with them. In the morning, I wake up, they left a message, we are okay. So they, they went, they just gone to Germany as refugees. And I said, what's going on? And that morning war broke out and I was like, they left a message and, you know, I already had the dreams to become the soldier. So what it happened that you are 18 years old, you know nothing about life, you know, you agree with me and everybody, yeah. when you're 18 years old, you think about, I don't know, uh, how to go out, you know, university, yeah. boys, girls, you know, all this 
scenarios, yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I make it such a big plan in my head. You know, I'm going to be the submarine commander, captain, you know, going to make the best girl. But <laughs> the, the life was not, was nothing like this. Suddenly we, you know, I'm in, a, in, a, in Croatia fighting for independence, which I didn't even know what democracy is, Amy, to be honest with you. I was a child of communism. I was a hardcore young socialist, you know, educated and everything. Uh, suddenly I'm fighting for democracy and my dream, uh, sorry, my understanding of democracy was uh, Coke, McDonald's, rock and roll. But it wasn't like this. So for me, I stayed almost nine years in military and I was several times wounded. And I was continuously dreaming, Amy. I was continuously dreaming, you know, every day in a combat or when I was at home on my own, wow. I always dreamed about something better. And uh, one day I'll tell you just a story. One day I was you know, on the front line and there was a big plane, you know, in the air you can see that it's a big, I imagine it was a big because you know, hot air bomb air behind the, the tail. Wow. And I said, this plane is going in Ibiza. There's the best McDonald's. One day I'm gonna be on a plane. And everybody was saying to me, and I was like commanding officer, I had a sizable unit. Uh, and I was says to me, boss, come on, stop dreaming. It's like one day I'm gonna be on that plane, I have enough. But what did what did actually happen? I was, you know, you're growing up in, in, in uncertainty, uh, yeah. developing all your skills, uh, which are useful in the combat. And then after the after peace come 96, I was transferred in military security intelligence services. And I was hoping then, I said, I'm going to be on that plane. So what it happened, 98, I was transferred to the part of foreign affairs, which, uh, you know, for me was like, what? He said, that's a 007 lifestyle. You know, it's like, yeah. so yes, <laughs> James yeah, Bond. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> and, uh, but I was fortunate enough, um, I was made at stage, which, you know, didn't work very well because my father passed away here earlier and uh, on a funeral my ex she told me she's pregnant with somebody else so it oh, was wow. Yeah, that was <laughs> wow how did you take that so, uh, well look um i i was angry i was angry i was disappointed one thing i i learned that uh, society didn't uh, register my presence uh, society has always been uh, happy to to embrace and hug people who are uh, contributing more whole society like you know i'll always call them the a great students um, the best that society can be you know university finished you know uh, have this all these beautiful titles before the names i wasn't you know i was in, in the military and you know you had the one title and then military security intelligence services and uh, you know the, for me it was was not so much liberty to, 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 to see myself as a part of society where I was in Croatia. I was always wanted more. And uh, when, you know, when you want more, Amy, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to understand when's gonna happen this. So yeah, you, you will agree with me, things happen when you least expect it. For me, it was a transfer to foreign affairs Will come suddenly. I never expected this, but I always wanted to move away to to leave the military. I have enough, you know, almost nine years, and you know, you seeing yourself, you know, become the bold, and you know, the, all these things. It's just things changing outside of you, and it wasn't it wasn't the thing I wanted anymore. I wanted more in my life, but I didn't know how to get this more from my life because that yeah. more was always exactly for the people who done university so that you know before um, people who has parents you know who can help them to uh, escalate themselves in society uh, I didn't have nobody uh, plus I was, I was going to divorce which uh, later on turned into something totally different so 98 I was on a plane to Australia after the training in foreign affairs I was the head of the uh, security intelligence services for Croatian government in Australia nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, then there was a kind of the biggest hurdle. Let's go sit on a plane. I've never been on a plane, Amy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. just. <laughs> and you know, when you see on the map, uh, you know, how far away Australia is, it's like, God, 
Yeah, said, how long it took you to fly there? <laughs> yeah, like, you know, it was like a 36 hours flight there in 98. Yeah. You know, it was uh, uh, Croatia, Austria, Austria, London, London. I was wow. just a man. I, was, I did just want to <laughs> <laughs> <I was gonna laughs> die. And then you come in Australia and then suddenly I want it back. That was my biggest fear. Yeah. I, know, yeah. I didn't know English. I know the Russian German. Uh, I said to my boss after a few days, I said to him, listen, this is not society for me. They're too friendly, too, uh, too nice. <laughs> they're to too, yeah, they're too nice. This is, this is happy people here. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, this is society different. is different, so cool. you know, like, but, you know, but, and I'm like, he says to me, come on, Mario, try and, you know, you know, make it the best, you know, we will support you. If it really doesn't work in three months' time, we'll transfer you in Washington. Because Washington was... Uh, was second offer and uh, I said to him okay I'll try but you know step by step step by step step by step I come to position that I realize that my dreams come true and I said like, if I achieve this so far I truly believe that I can do more uh, again you know when you dream you need to be careful when you dream when you're 14 years old or when you're 29 years old because people said, what do you want from your life? And I was like, I wanted this and this. So, so what is that that you wanted? Can you, can you tell us what is that that you wanted? What is that that you were dreaming of? <laughs> First of all, I want to have a kid. I want to have a child. I knew it. There's no secret. I, you know, I, um, due to injuries in a war, I, I knew that it's going to be difficult for me to have a child. But I met a lovely lady here in Australia, and uh, you know, I explained my position that I'm going to divorce. <laughs> I can't have the kids. Uh, I like to stay in Australia, but I don't want to stay in Australia because you're Australian and you know you give me visa. So she says to me, "You are such a mess." I say, "Yes, I am." It's like I don't know how. To do that. <laughs> and then she fell in love with you. <laughs> yeah, she did, and you know, we, we, so cool. we, yeah. So like you know, she accepted me for who I am, and you know. In the life, I truly believe, Amy, that <clears throat> from now, from distance, what I want everybody to understand, everything's happened for the reason, in the right moment, with the right people, right events. Yeah. And I truly believe that what you believe is what you become. Uh, you, so you become what you believe, what you're saying, and what you're thinking. When yeah. my son was born, and it's, it's born to IVF, there's, that's, there's no secrets, it's, it's, He's a beautiful young boy, now it's 18 years old. Um, he kills my soul every day with his puberty things, but <laughs> he's there. So like, do I believe gonna have a child one day? Even I was told, you can't have. I, I wanted, you know, I dreamed, I, I, I wish it. And, yeah. Uh, it didn't happen when I wanted Amy, you know, it happened when, when he wanted to happen. So yeah. that was yeah. it. <laughs> um, but, and then what I really wanted is to have my business. And that was the biggest issue. How I can run the business, I don't even properly English. I mean, now I know much more than 20 years ago. My English was very, very poor, very poor. I mean, very, very poor. Your, your English is perfectly fine. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, don't yeah. even say that. <laughs> we just, you know, I'm from Hungary originally as well, so I, I have an mm -hmm. accent also. So it's okay. We just have accents. That's all. We okay, speak don't worry. Proper don't English. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> so, like, I was always, always having that, that belief. I, I insert that belief in myself. Nobody wants me because of my English. Yeah. And that was the biggest, my, that was my biggest obstacle. I wanted, I didn't know how to do it. And then in 2009, uh, GFC comes across. Um, I was fully dependent by that stage to uh, my wife. Um, and then everything crashed. The marriage and uh, crashed uh, the yeah. finances, everything. Everything is just crashing down. And I decided to pull the line and say like, now it's time or never to start working on my dream. So, you know, there's a lot of setbacks in life. So instead of talking about my life in, in, in a way like, you know, Alfred Hitchcock and, and the Dr. Stephen King 
make the movie together in Chernobyl and I mean like that's how the, my life looks like it's a horror movie which it's a horror movie comedy. so how old were you when this happened how old were you when you decided this is it I'm gonna make my dreams come true and and what was that switch that kind of switched it on 38 years old I was 38 years old and you know for some, some standards Amy people will say you're too old Amy no I'm not you know I just said figure Mario why yeah. you want to do this find a job and yeah. what happened I've, I've run into the book. I was so desperate, you know, was, my marriage was crashing. My son was, my son was being uh, diagnosed with epilepsy. Uh, mm-hmm. So it was, it was no money. And I didn't want to depend on my on, 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 uh, on wife. And I said, like, I need to draw the line here. I'm going to move everything away from me and work on my dream, which is going to secure more. The tragic tragedy is, I mean, when... You don't know what you're capable to do before you uh, reach the point where you break yourself. So either you uh, remake yourself or you're going to stay on the bottom. For yeah. me, the crucial point was, uh, as I said, uh, I was in a uh, corporate environment. I was a government environment and corporate. And still, I, I depended financially of my wife because, you know, I started a career here. You know, she's established, she's born. And I was wanted that independence. I'm the man, you know, I need to give my family, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she wasn't like this. So so one day what it happened with the GFC start rolling, as you remember, 2008, 2009, you know, we were spending all the savings and she was only working. And then one day I need to, I was being forced to sell things, which I never done in my life. Yeah, and uh, one of the last things I saw was a toys of my of my of my child, and uh, you know you come into this you know pawn shop and kid wants the toys back and you give him over the counter to give you twenty dollars. I mean, like uh, break, break your heart, you know, it just yeah. breaks you inside. And, and I said, that's it. I need to face my fear of yeah. my non English. I started I started my business in Saint intelligence. <laughs> And uh, I didn't have money for advertising. And people told me, you can't succeed. Your English is bad. You know, you, you can't run an investigative company. Ah, uh, where those people come from? <laughs> but, but that, so many. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure that this is the everybody uh, problem that we, people as uh, people run us is uh, the problem, not just us. And if you don't believe in yourself, so I run into that book, I mean, not sure if you read, it's called, uh, from writer, it's called Paul Hanna, you can do it. And he said in that book, in opening uh, statement, a first paragraph, referring to movie, Field of Dreams. Did you watch with Kevin Costner, Field, Field of Dreams? Uh, no, I haven't Oscar? seen it. You know, the, 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 the baseball field in a, in a corn, the, he make a baseball field. Anyway, he said, if you build, it will come. So I, I knew it. That's a fool. <laughs> and I struggled three years. I struggled for the first client. Yeah. I know how I survived. Trust me, I, I have no idea. I have no idea how I was surviving. And then with the first client, the second client, and you know, you going ahead, I put myself another goal to become the writer. And that was a trick, you know what I mean? So, like, English, it's easy to talk. Yeah, so, yeah, so first you're worried about, you know, you don't speak English, but when you, you know, when you write English, it's, like, spelled differently than we are saying it, right? So it's, like, learning two languages. So how did you know with that? I improvise, Amy. There's no lies. So, like, if you want to do something, you improvise. So, like, I was lucky. I will, uh, I will ask the people in my office, I employed the very smart people. I didn't have no money, but I knew it, I need to give them pay. And I explained to them, they knew it. I so like, I'm not an Aussie, Aussie, oi, oi, oi. I have the knowledge, I have experience, but whatever goes out in public must be checked my English. You know, as I said, LinkedIn, my books. And I met the good people who never, you know, uh, who believed in me and yeah. never make fun of me or bully me or ridicule okay. me. That's like super important. Yeah. Yes. And, and as long as you have the clear message to your clients, and my strategy was always walk to the door and I will ask the person what I can do to make you king in your in your organization. And people say, like, what? 
I say, you tell me how I can make a king to my services in the organization. That was my sales pitch. And I said, like, you know how the people corporate world, like, what? I said, like, <laughs> give me one job and I will prove to you that you make a good choice. If not, you can go in the okay. public and say everybody in my business is, 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 is worse. And you know, Amy, I, I wasn't feel comfortable. I knew it. It's a good, it have a passion and, you know, dedication. But it was hard to admit one thing, rejection. And yeah. I've been rejected, of course. But yeah. if you surround yourself with a positive, then I got a coach, you know, I couldn't afford it. That gentleman, he knew it when I went through that, I paid a few staff members and I have the OK business. And, you know, his, his Daniel says to me, you don't need to pay me. I'll teach you some things. So he spent with me three days, full days in the office explaining the process, you know, of the sales, of the, you know, the appearance. Yeah. It's not just, it wasn't good enough, only I know what I do. It, you need to, uh, you know, appear differently in, in the corporate yeah. world. You need to, what you're talking about, being, you know, firm. And as I was progressing through my life, I realized I'm learning new vocabulary, let's just say, talking to you or, you know, and a few other people, I realized that my vocabulary become richer, become more yeah. developed, more sophisticated, rather than, uh, you know, watching just TV and, and yeah. so be careful what you wish for. So I become the writer, I start writing and, and eventually, you know, uh, ending my master's as well in university on English, which for me was, but Super cool. thing it is, I feel like, you know, I, now, 10 years later, sorry, or 48 years later, now I can say, Amy, that if you really want something, you achieve them, but it takes time. And being yeah. impatient, it's, it's the biggest, it's the biggest, it's the biggest issue. So now, like, it's easy for me to say, you know, Amy, I have been involved, not to you, like, to just a figure of speech or somebody. No, I don't like to do this. I like to say to people, it's hard to impress because I've been through all this. I believe you as well. Oh, we all have the owl. So th well, thank you so much for sharing that so far. I know we, got, we kind of got, got disconnected here for a few minutes. So, uh, so let's get back back to it. So uh, you are now a CEO uh, of Inside Intelligence. And what do you do there? Uh, what kind of clients do you serve? And and um, yeah, I, I also wanted to ask you about the books because I haven't read your books yet and I want to read them. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's okay. That's okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you. I don't want to... Yeah. I don't like it, electronic books, you know, I, for me, it was difficult always to read something what's on a, on a, on a, on a screen because it is always, you know, start reading and then comes email or comes the message or something. Like, oh. But I was saying you, though, all my books being related to, uh, to what you. I'm doing. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, the books have been related to the investigative interrogation techniques, social engineering, which is, uh, uh, perfectly created environment to extract information from from other person uh, identity so it's all related to the human intelligence and investigations and interrogation methods. Pretty cool. yeah so but what happened last year as i say i truly believe amy please correct me because but you know i think that life always give you the challenges in a way to the people and as i said like I was a sucker. I, I begged for love in my life. I begged for the friendships. I begged for many things in my life. And when I hit my, my bottom in 2009, 2010, I, have, I had another one in 2014, for different reasons. But uh, then you realize that people you're surrounding yourself, it's very important. And yes. you, you need to change yourself, no other people. I was the first one who was pointing fingers and everybody blaming everybody for my mistakes. I blame, you know, I can to that. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, uh, I used to be like that too. Yeah, so like, you know, this, this is the people I met. I was lucky. And this gentleman, uh, Marlon, he told me, why don't you end up, but finish book, my biography. It's like my biography. It's like, you know, who's going to read my biography? He said like, yo, Mara, it's like, it's, <laughs> 
I said, like, okay, I'll try. And it's hard to write ourselves. So what I finished, uh, two books, biography, one's called uh, Blood Soft Soil. Second, it's a Still Rain, but that's not, uh, that is not in the title because what happened in the meantime, I got publisher. And um, I can't disclose the name at the moment because the contract and they, they are very, very envious and jealous. And they want to convert the movie in, in, in Hollywood. And I said, like, Come on, seriously? So what happened, Amy, that all that struggle you're going through life, somebody's going to notice, you know? I am always say, if people want to know how to run the business and how to be successful, go to Amy Knazik. Ah, go thank go you so much. That's so, so I said it, just, I said the I said the beginning, there's a few people who can impress me. And that's like, what I'm seeing always, uh, um, This is the beauty of, of, of the meeting people uh, on a professional business that was on LinkedIn. There's a lot of people who share their, their thoughts, but I can now judge and I can see it, how the people actually function. It's, it's easier to me to see to somebody. And that's the same with, with Amy. So guys, go to this lady, um, because you know, you. I, will not, I will not wake up for a morning. You know, for the, for ev not just for everybody. It is someone gives me opportunity. You gave me opportunity. Amy, she found time for me for the morning. Um, so that's what my book's about, and I'm very grateful with you. In the meantime, what's happened to me? I start running the business radio talk show on English, <laughs> which exposed me to the different avenues and the good credibility. So the business we run here in Saint Regis Group, we are. Uh, providing investigative intelligence solutions. We're servicing major corporations in Australia and the globally. Now the less global, let's go take that globally a little bit less because <laughs> we can't travel to Australia yet. Yeah. But so it's everything is online. So we're providing investigative intelligence solutions for our clients from uh, insurance claims, uh, political intelligence, social media intelligence. Uh, we're doing a lot of due diligence, background checks, surveillances so it's it's a it's a one one-stop shop with for information risk management uh that's what we do and sounds really cool really interesting <laughs> yeah you. i, I, I want to read your books because it sounds like you know it's being like a psychology like you you kind of reading people's minds or something like that <laughs> that's what i'm thinking um, out of it <laughs> well i i give i give credit people to uh, on uh, um, schools i went and they, they, they are smart ones. And, you know, because why would I, you know, sometimes I think to myself, you do what you love to do, what you're doing best. And when you do this with a passion and knowledge experience, you can't fail. It's hard, it's difficult. I, you know, I, I know what maybe is hungry, being homeless, uh, being divorced and, you know, all these things I really know. But if you're persistent and if you do the way you have the plan, you have the dreams, which nobody should deter you from those dreams. And if you have a good coach like a Amy, you <laughs> must be successful. It's true, like, you know, look, I couldn't afford them. I told you I couldn't afford, you know, I, you know, I was copying people. I was looking at coffee shops. I was a little spy like before. I was like, what is, what is, what, oh, okay, that's how they're doing it. Honestly, Amy, and you know, I combined the small plans for myself. Keeping ideas here, it's good, but when you put it on a paper, it's a big plane. Yeah. And if you stick with a seven day plane, and even if you decide to change the dieting or whatever it is, things are change, you know? And this is what makes me happy that people like yourself give me opportunity. For mother started the plane, talk to me. Why would I wake up, you know, like with a with person who's helping so many people and you have the great recommendations and saw your success stories. This is what makes me happy that people who don't save on themselves to help others, you know, then I see myself. But if I walk somewhere and somebody, you know, I'm the manager in a bank and, you know, okay, you are the employee nine to five. You don't work for the check. The check comes to you every week. I need to fight like Amy, like everybody else. But that's yeah. the beauty of everything. So, uh, this is what I appreciate in, in, in people. I mean, I get a business from the clients. I doing everything to justify their decision 
even if they're that day happy or I don't know, like, you know, they needed my services, but always gonna prove to clients that they make a good choice for, uh, for what's it calling them, choosing me. And yeah. are gonna, always gonna uh, make it that, to endeavor that, that, that part with my books, education. So they see that I'm not stagnating on one spot. I wanted them to see, and I'm advising everybody, invest into, into a legacy and then you can get your clients. Clients gonna appreciate this. Yeah, absolutely love it. So um, I just wanna ask you one more thing. So I talk to many, many people that are stuck in their nine to five, right? So they, they're doing something that they no longer love, they burnt out, you know, their bosses are not really appreciating what they do. Like even if like they make okay money, they can pay their, their rent and all, all that stuff and live month to month, but it's totally unfulfilled. They have their dreams on the side and they're, they're kind of scared to go after it because it's the safety, right? They have their paycheck, they have their mortgage paid. So they're afraid to make that move to actually go after their dream. So what would you suggest to people like that? Like how would they go about it? What kind of maybe mindset shift would they need to uh, start doing to, to make that happen? <laughs> I, look, I one, one thing, I do remember one of the classes the, the lady, she, you know, when I was when I was in the military, she asked us, what's the, what's the strongest finger on the hand? And, you know, we all, it's this, this, it's a, this one, right? It's the smallest one, it's the strongest finger on the, on the, on the hand. Oh, wow. I didn't it's, know that, really? Yeah, it, it gives a balance. You know, try to drive, try to do the steering or try to carry the bags or try to hold the rifle. Whatever it is, this is, this is actually the balance of everything. Cool. Usually, yeah, like, <laughs> So, you know, when you take a consideration in life, we always concentrate on the big picture that so many things on the side appearing, the, the signs, the warnings, alarms, and we ignoring. I was the number one. I can write a book of so many bad, terrible decisions, honestly, because I just ignore the one thing. Why? Because we always looking, you know, those things here. We don't look at the thing, a small one. So, when you want to change something, you either must have a decision, a firm decision, and believe in what you do, or you're going to reach the breaking point in your life when you have no other choice, like I did, and then to start working on something and fulfill dreams. I didn't start my business to fulfill my dreams. They come as I was growing in my business, in my life, and everything. But I realized that I can afford now to study English or I can afford to write the books, I can afford uh, things I couldn't because I was providing the services. So anybody who is afraid, we are all afraid, we are all afraid. Yeah. But Amy, let me tell you something. If you don't have your plans, imagine how you're going to feel when you fit in somebody else's plans. And most importantly, yeah, life is risky, but it's so risky that nobody comes out alive. So regardless of what you do, it's one's being responsible adult and take care of a family and everything else. But if you don't try, someone is gonna try, are you gonna fit into their plans? I heard from the gentleman called the Bob Proctor and he asked yes. his speaker, he said, the richest place on the planet is the cemetery. And I was like, you know, so he continued talking. Oh, I, I remember when he said that. I love, I There's love the his people with the well. dreams and ideas who never eventuated. And, and that actually strike me. Yes. So I don't think that I will say seven of ten my ideas I do, they're not good. <laughs> but I've been taught. <laughs> yeah. I say, have, and that's like the important thing is if you want to succeed, you just find a person who's going to support you a long way, invest like Amy or find a coach who knows, who's been to struggle, people who knows what they did, how they did. It's hard to have a support of somebody from your environment who is there just for you, for sake of being, not to be for you in a way how he or she was like yourself. That's the set of people. If you want to go, go for it or don't go at all. If you want to go up and down, up and down, up and down, planes, A, B, C, D, it will never work. It's hard. It's hard. 
you know I mean, you know, you work it 24-7, it's not nine to five, and you need to make yourself check. Nobody gives you check. And you have no check. I love what I do, so I'm, I have no complaints. <laughs> and see, but that's the same thing. Like, you know, I'm hoping that this yeah. is gonna resonate with your with your with your with your listeners and the viewers. But I'll be very happy to answer like if I had a chance to meet someone like yourself to to guide you to the process of building myself, it will be shorter pain, less obstacles, but I couldn't afford, I couldn't, I didn't know people, I didn't know what I look for. And that's like that's the reason why you strike attention to me because every post resonates with me, regardless how successful or unsuccessful I am, but life experience taught me to see these things. Most of people don't see that things. And I'm advising everybody, if you go for it, <laughs> be all in 100%, go with Amy, and she's gonna show it. So that I understand everybody, this is not paid advertising, there's nothing to do with, with, with no, nothing. No, I'm you surprised you're talking about it. Thank you so because, much. Because like, I will point, pinpoint you on you 100 times before the many other posts, because like I can resonate, only reason because of the life experience and where I'm right now, I'm reading your posts. Other posts are great, but I'll stick with Amy and a very few people. That's the that's thank the you. Reason. You're welcome. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I I share my stuff to inspire people to just get yeah. out of that box that they are living in. Because I used to be there. I used to be in that box as well, right? I was closed in and, and I didn't see further than that. And once I you know, watch inspiring people like Bob Proctor, like you mentioned, and, and, you know, your mind just starts firing these ideas or holy shit, like I can do this. Like I can actually, yeah. and, and one inspired action after another, you actually can get your dreams come true. Like within a few years, yes, the first two, three years is struggling and, you know, you need to work your butt off. It's really true, but you can get there after a while. Right. So. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's like that. Yeah. That's that's reason I'm grateful to I, I talking to you this morning because talking to you I becoming more um, you know I was I was talking I become more aware of things I told you and I said like I I can improve now in future some other things because I remember how it was before so you yeah. know, that's reason I like it while talking to you yes. yeah yeah awesome thank you thank you so I'm gonna ask you something so right now in your life do you st uh, do you have days when you doubt yourself when you still doubt what you are doing or do you have an idea you go for it you action it and it's done I have no doubts anymore I did have the doubts before I truly believe that if, if, if you believe in yourself if you really demonstrate to you others and the clients that you committed and that you're that you're professional that what you are preaching you're doing that what you're doing has the results positive uh, meaningful impact on the clients and i truly believe that you can deliver um no i have no doubts i have no reserves or, or, or Love it. Know, <laughs> yeah because at the end of the day look the COVID hit us all four months ago there was a big plans and i do remember last year before i go i just want to say this one i was singapore um, I was doing big presentation in one of the banks and I was the smallest, smallest company then at that, that table and everybody was bringing all these big folders, you know, golden couplings, you know, everything else. And I, I don't say I was in shorts, I was decently dressed in suit and everybody was presenting and I, at the end, I say, excuse me, and the CEO of that bank say, yes, Mr. Biggs. I say, I think that this will not work. He says to me, why? It's like, we're in Singapore. And I think the pandemic is going to be declared. And everybody's like, no, you don't know. You know, <laughs> we are the company of, you know, million employees. We know we do risk management. So like, I tell you something from my point of view. I think that we are all going to face something uncertain. And what happened two weeks later was the world was being shut down, right? Yeah. Now, what I try to say, COVID is a one thing, and that's what I respect about you, consistency, you're consistent in line, you try to help the people, try to set and so like, while I have a doubt in myself when I see the people better than myself, like yourself and a few other, continuously on daily basis, reading and developing the skills for us who are learning. So no, I have no doubt because- I, was oh, I love that. 
I absolutely love that. So this is actually something that I try to teach my students and explain to them that your certainty, that your yeah. identity, your certainty, that's that's the most that you're going to need to work on on a daily basis. It's on yourself. So, yes, you know, um, some people is like, give me the strategy. How can I make money? How can I have more clients? And then they have this certain, you know, strategic questions. Uh, but when you look at the person, you know, where is your commitment? Are you consistent? Can you do this every day? Are you taking care of yourself? And it's just like, what? What? <laughs> so, that's what I want to see. That's what the clients want to see. You know, I'm better than I do. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's what I respect you. If the client sees to your, your consistency, well, you're still here kicking, you're not complaining. Well, of course, I'm going to give it to you opportunity to, to bring my company up or my clients or whatever it is. So, yeah. That's the beauty of everything else, yes. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so why don't you tell people, our viewers, where can they find you? Where can they find your books? How can they contact <laughs> with you? Yeah, look, it's a, it's a two ways. First, you talk to Eric Nezovic on my LinkedIn, <laughs> and I'm her contact, Mario Beckes, B-E-K-E-S, so on the LinkedIn, Mario Beckes. Uh, or you can come on a website, Inside Intelligence, I-N-S-I-G-H-T, intelligence.com.au, and just feel free to, to, to contact me through the website. It's an it's a email and all contact details. So LinkedIn or the insideintelligence.com.au, and I'll be happy to talk to you all. Awesome. Thank you so much for You're everything welcome. that you've shared. It's absolutely super interesting and inspiring. And, and you know, listening to your story and going you know, through these ups and downs in your life, since you're a child, since you're a 14 year old, little child, really. Uh, and look how far we have come. Come, I think it's amazing. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Everybody, everybody like can, and everybody can, Amy. Uh, I'm not uh, uh, the individual only one. I truly believe people need that people like yourself to be coached. I truly believe people need to understand whatever happened now is going to define them later. And you know, as long as you believe in yourself and your capabilities, I don't let the other one to put you down, you're going to be okay. But you need to have consistent development. You need to have the coach in life. I do have the coach as well here. Uh, still the same person, but I can afford him now. <laughs> and I still, you know, discussing things different level because I realize seven of 10 ideas, it's a waste of time, energy, money. And I say, yeah, you see, that's a good point. So everybody needs to believe themselves, have a good coach and decide there's a point of no return. You go ahead, you do it, you do it or die. It's same like in the army. So. You do it or die. That's, that's a perfect yeah. closing actually. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so thank you so much for being here. Thank you, thank you so much for watching us and we'll be back soon with entrepreneur, entrepreneurial success stories. And looking forward to some amazing guests this year. I'm not going to tell you who they are because I like to keep you in the dark and surprise you. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you so much, Mario, for coming. You're welcome. Super thank you for having me today. Oh, I am there in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> going to bed now. No, no. I'm going now to take the photos I told you of love photography. So, but thank you for having me today. And uh, guys, stick with Amy. You're going to go far. I trust me, you will. She's a person who has have consistency on a daily basis, and that's what you want. Appreciate it. You're awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you thank for you. watching, everyone. Just say bye to the viewers. <laughs> yeah, see you, Ciao.